Guten Tag, y'all. This is Ryan with Major League Hacking. I'm filling in for Kat today. I'm going to be showing you some helpful features on Zoom for when you're hosting MLH localhost workshops digitally. Uh, because of COVID-19, MLH is providing access to pro Zoom accounts uh, for localhost organizers, so you get access to some extra features and can host up to 100 hackers in your workshop. Today in this video, we'll go through all of the kind of basics of controlling Zoom, and we'll even talk about a couple of the more advanced features as well. So we're going to get started by clicking on New Meeting here. And once this window loads, we're going to start by testing our speaker and microphone. I've used Zoom before, so I know these are working for me, but I definitely recommend you do this the first time you boot up. After that, I'm going to hit Join with Computer Audio, and I'm going to go ahead and stop the automatic recording up here. That might not happen on your account. If it doesn't, don't need, you don't need to worry about that. In the bottom left-hand corner, we're going to see a Mute and Start Video button. These are your local controls, so if I wanted to mute my own microphone, you just need to click here. And similarly for video, I don't have a webcam connected right now, but if you were using a webcam, you could start and stop it with that button. The next thing I want to pull your attention towards is this Invite button. You can open this up at any time and do copy URL to get the URL for your Zoom meeting so other folks can join. You'll have access to this ahead of time and you should share it with hackers ahead of time. But if you do need it during the meeting to share on like a local Slack or something like that, you can grab it right there. Next up, I want to talk about managing participants. So th on this panel, you'll be able to mute and unmute folks as needed throughout the conference. Uh, importantly, you have this mute and unmute all button. These are going to be really helpful for gathering everyone's attention. And underneath this more tab, you have a mute participants on entry button. Once your workshop actually starts, I recommend checking this so that when folks join, you're not immediately distracted by the background audio they have going on. Now that we know how to invite participants and manage them once they're actually in our room, I wanted to talk about some of the other features that Zoom has to offer, like sharing your screen, recording your call, making breakout rooms. And we're gonna start with sharing your screens because you're gonna to need to share your slides and share your code editor as you're running through your workshop. You're gonna start that process by clicking the share button here, and you're gonna be given a bunch of different options. Uh, personally, I like to go with sharing a screen because I use a dual monitor setup. So you can see I have a second screen here and a first screen here. For this example, I'm going to share screen one, but you could also share just the Chrome window that contains your slides or whatever else you'd like to. So I'm going to click on screen one and then just hit share. And once I do, I'm given an entirely different interface. I can see this green border tells me what's being shared with people on the call. And I have this little hotbar up top that I can use uh, to access Zoom's features still. And at any time I want to, I can hit this stop share button as well. So let's go ahead and stop the share. One thing I want to point out is that participants are also going to need to share their screen for help with debugging code and other issues. If you run into that situation and you need them to share their screen, you might want to come in here and allow multiple participants to share. Uh, you can toggle this and then it'll be live for the rest of the call. If you need to draw everyone's attention back to you, you can always do the one participant can share at a time. Next up, I just want to talk about the remaining features here. You have a chat panel that your hackers can use at any time. They can even send messages to various specific people in the meeting. They can upload files if they want to upload their code or anything like that. I uh, definitely recommend you actively use this. And in fact, we'd actually encourage you to have a friend who acts as a moderator who can kind of help uh, inbound some of those questions and address them themselves. If you have another organizer who can help out with that, it's definitely a great resource to have. In addition to the chat panel, you're going to have a record button. If you want to record your presentation, you're more than welcome to do so. So the final feature I want to talk about is breakout rooms, which are going to help you pair off hackers and mentors, pair off groups of hackers who want to work together, or just kind of make your video conference a little bit more one-to-one -one instead of one-to-many. When you click on this breakout rooms button, you're going to be given various options. I've cheated and gone ahead and made a couple of rooms already, so you can kind of get an idea here. Um, but this recreate panel is what you'll see when you first create rooms. So you can set any number of rooms that you like here. You can have them automatically assigned. So hackers will just kind of be slotted into these automatically based on the number of people in attendance, or you can do it manually, which is what I've selected here. So for manual rooms, you can just click this assign button and pick participants who will be uh, asked to join each of these breakout rooms, and they can leave those rooms at any time. So if you had a mentor and a hacker who wanted to pair off and troubleshoot a bug together, you could just assign them to breakout room one and they'd be off and running. So I just want to leave you all with a couple of pro tips to make sure that your local host workshop is a success. First and foremost, hop on Zoom before your workshop and practice some of the controls here. Make sure that you know where to find things. You're going to feel a lot more confident when all your hackers are there if you've used the platform once or twice before. 
when you're actually sharing the materials, make sure that you have a reliable internet connection and make sure that you're in a quiet environment. That's gonna make it easier for hackers to focus on what matters, the technology there. And then finally, if you have a friend who can help moderate and help out in the chat room, we'd really recommend that as well. Having someone to kind of triage questions and pair people off can be really useful. And back on our original Zoom screen here, just to close this out, you know, one of the most important pieces of an MLH local host workshop is building your community and really uh, fostering meaningful conversations between hackers. I hope that some of the pro tips in this video help you do just that when you host your workshop. I know it's going to be great. If you need any help, you're always welcome to reach out to us at localhost at mlh.io. We've got plenty of resources on our blog posts as well. Once again, I'm Ryan with Majorly Hacking. I hope you all have an awesome time.